What's happening, baby? Man, that last episode brought back some shit, boy. You know what? I haven't seen it yet, ladies and gentlemen. This is your man, Chris Gotti, um, Vice President of Murder, Inc., owner of Ad Bitches Music. And we are talking about the Murder, Inc. story on BET episode four. For everybody that got to see it live tonight, you probably caught the finale, which we won't talk about next week. You know what? I was experiencing this thing live in real time with everybody, you know, so I watched it tonight. I just finished watching not only the um, te uh, the documentary, but also the tales, which my nephew Sonny did. Shout out Sonny, you know what I'm saying? And I want to thank everybody for giving my moms all the love. She got a mad love this weekend. Even now on the live, they shouting out, man. I appreciate everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, strong, man. She's a blessed woman, man. It's amazing. Nah, man, that's, you know what, I just went to visit my mom the other day, man, so I know how it feels, man, she always yelling at me, but you know, it's love with mothers, man, you know, they could <laughs> say some shit to you, you know what I mean? Different, that mother love is different, man. The mother love is different, so shout out to all the mothers watching the live. You know, let's go, let's get to some of these questions you got for me, man, talk about it. Okay, so episode four, man, I watched it a couple times. I didn't watch it one time. I watched it a couple times. And episode four is about the trial, the Murder, Inc. trial. That's the end of Yes. The feds came. Um, 50 Cent was emerging. And, um, I mean, just, just without getting all the way into the questions per se, what was going on in your mind at that time? The, it was bigger than anything. When they mm -hmm. came, the feds don't play. So, again, um, up until that point, you know, we was under investigation. And right. I thought, under investigation, what does that really mean? I don't really fucking know. It's like, we're right. not arrested. We, you know, we're not charged with any crime. But they, they confiscated all our computers and everything, and they're watching us. And that's what the lawyer's like, they're going to be watching. And I was like, well, let them watch. You know, what's crazy is during that time, uh, you know, one of my counter moves was I hired a guy named Derek Parker. Anyone right. know Derek Parker, he wrote a book about the hip hop police because he started that unit. So I hired for me to be my security. So basically, I had the head of the hip hop police, which he didn't know we knew he was, but we knew he was, right? And let him come in Murder Inc for about six months, seven months before I said, I don't need him anymore. Cause I just let, I wanted him to see everything and then go report back to the police and like, ah, oh, this is just music. Right, right. And these are the backstories that you people won't know about from the doc cause it wasn't expressed. But right. Derek wrote a book, he spoke, spoke about how he worked for me and was with murdering and he basically said in the book he wrote that niggas was doing nothing but making money and we was around real, real dudes though. He mentioned that in the book, like we were around some real dudes, but I don't, I didn't know there was a law to be around real dudes and try and help them empower them with working and being part of something. So mainly, y'all caught the heat and flack because of your relationship with Supreme McGriff. A thousand percent. Uh, Supreme, no shout out, Supreme. You know what I'm saying? They knew he knew. You know, in hindsight, it's 2020. Don't we going through it? we didn't think that that would be real because it's like, why can't we have a friend? Like, why can't, who are you to tell us who we could fuck with? Exactly. exactly. And that's really what they were saying. And they was basically saying that if you fuck with him, you must be doing something wrong and all this other shit. And I'm like, my nigga, like, God damn. Right. We just hit records. That's all we doing and, and pushing hard, working hard. So it was, so, so, as I heard it, he was trying to film his own documentary. Not and documentary. He was trying to film a movie. A movie. Okay. He wrote a book called, it's a Donald Goins novel. Crime called, Partners. Called Crime Partners. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, I mean, but all of this from a fucking movie, like, it's not, it's not, like, impossible for you guys to spend 20000 or 50000 or support a car. Like, that's not, that's not unrealistic. You know what I mean? You know, basically, he got $50,000 from multiple people, not just us. Jay-Z ain't put it in. Rough Riders put in. We put in. But what he really, we helped him out further was that was part of 
the investment that was made for the movie, right? Okay. The second part of the investment was he didn't realize he didn't have the full rights to the book. He thought he had already got that and he didn't. And then right. he had to pay another, say, it was like 120 something thousand dollars for the right. right we paid for those rights, which we wrote up contracts for. And basically was like, yo, all this shit come home when the money comes from this doc, this movie. You know, right. we paid over $4 million first week. It was straight to DVD and it made over $4 million. And when, when I tell you, that's when really things got super expedited on the federal side. They was not or let him get that money legally. Mm -hmm. You understand? They was not letting him get that money legally and they was going to block it at all any means necessary. And that's what they did. They made, they made him, his partner at the time, uh, you know, all everybody sign off on a, a saying we will not be able to go after that money because they basically said if you come for this money that was generated we'll come we're really gonna get you to like because it's coming from illegal proceeds which it wasn't they was full of shit so they just was trying to catch a blessing basically well they did you know this is the power of the government they have unlimited resources they tell you the feds have unlimited resources and unlimited ink and you know ink the press. So if you think about it, they really smeared our names in the press crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Press at this time, just killing us over and over with bad publicity, fake stories. These are all generated by the fake news by the feds. Wow. Um, you, know, you don't learn this until you go through it, I promise you. No, for sure. What I want to do while it's on my mind, I want to give a shout out to the legendary Danny Boy. Um, got a new single dropping called This Song. Um, Danny this, Boy. Yes, sir. At Danny Boy Stewart on Instagram. So just want to give him a shout out. You know what I'm saying? He was on the legendary Tupac's I Ain't Mad at You. Yeah. Career, doing his shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Danny Boy. Shout out Danny Boy, man. That's what's up. Keep banging, yo. Adventure Music is waiting for you whenever you're ready, brother. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, I mean, during all of these things, this is around the time that Lloyd came. So talk to me about, man, Lloyd just being introduced to uh, Murder, Inc., because he was actually going to New York to sign with L.A. Reid, and yeah. your, one of your people put you our guys... Lawyer, Ron Swinney, a lawyer, intercepted that pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you stole an artist from L.A. Reid. Let's talk about it. Well, you know, so Ron Sweeney uh, was our attorney at the time. He gets, hears this artist right away, thinks, man, if I could put this artist with Irv, this would be great. We wanted to expand on more R&B side. We had artists already, rappers, and we wanted some more R&B stuff. And again, at the end of the day, it was all, once we had a Shanti, we knew we could step in that world, no problem. You know what I mean? From an R&B standpoint. So right away, uh, Ron, when he called me, it was like, let's get it to Irv immediately. I heard the music. It was like, let's get it to Irv ASAP. And Irv immediately heard it, loved it, and was like, man, we got to sign this guy. And then that's what he did. He he made, Irv made it happen. Like, and got him signed right away. So that was a dope interception, if you understand. Like, you know, and it was on, on Lloyd's part, it was dope that he felt Irv's I, his passion. You know, I tell everyone when they deal with Irv, if you don't feel his passion, something's wrong. So Lloyd came with the record Southside. The remix had Scarface on it. Who else was it? Was it anybody else on that remix? No, that's Irv again. He Irv, Irv likes to create. Uh, I don't want to give up like all of his secrets or some of his secrets when he produces, but he wants what I call the yin and yang. Right. So if you're singing something nice, he wants to deal with something rough. Like, he wants to create the track. He don't want soft on soft, if you understand. So through the course of all of the shit, but then you got 50 launching, and, um, <laughs> like, Irv described it. He said, like, yo, I think, what did he hear? He, which record was it? He was saying, like, Dr. Dre gave him it. I think it was. No, that's in the club. Yeah, in the club. He was like, all right. Yeah. Let's, let's, because he came, out, he came out with this records, of course, but those are local, regional-type records. 
And we're, 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 we're global right at that point. So we're not stressing a regional type disc record. It's local. It's all good. We can right. get through it. Um, he's not a bona fide star yet. Right. Wank's a good record, but it still didn't reach all those places yet. Right? It wasn't a hit. It wasn't what you we consider a hit record. It was a good, it was a good, great leak record, warmed up everything for him. Mm -hmm. And then pops in the club. And that's when Irv said, when he said we was in the office, we was in my office. <laughs> Big speaker, so we would always watch the videos and everything, turn that shit up. It's like a real, you know, vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like a studio damn near. And um when we it was like dead silence in the room. So when he said it, we have a problem. He knew right then and there we had a problem. Because we knew he had a hit record, and hit records make stars, and that's what we knew. We're gonna be dealing with a star, not just a little artist making this song in part four leaving like who left who left the label and like was were, were you feeling like people were well, turning you, back so or what you know when Charlie said she left and Herb let her leave or whatever we didn't hold nobody captive not hold any artist captive Herb if he's again I don't want to give up stuff because you didn't see the, you didn't go to the last episode we still got more to go but mm -hmm. he, you know Herb is someone if you fuck with him he's gonna he go through every everything possible to help you or be with you. Right. Um, and that's how he treated all his relationships in music. You know, he has made mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like so, trying to sign Nas with Jay. But in his mind, he's not thinking he's hurting Jay. In hindsight, he realized that was one of the worst things he could have ever did. He admits to that. But, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it was just weird. You know what I'm saying? Because he would, he's, if he's fucking with you and everyone he signed, he fucked with. Okay? Right. And try to figure out how to make everyone win. And like I said, damn near all of them was on number one records. Mm -hmm. So sit there and say that, when I sit there and say that, it's like, damn, if you want a number one record, you know what I mean? It's like, damn, yo, he's, you got every opportunity for yourself right there. You know, there's only a handful of artists that are on number one records in the country, and you're a featured artist on a number one record, which means you're on. See, back then, you're in hundreds of millions of audience hearing your voice and your words on the right. song. That's your opportunity. That's your window to get on and be like, yo, it's I'm time for me to shine, to come up from under whoever, Ja Rule or Ashanti or whatever it may be. It's your time to do it. We did it with Ashanti, same right. way. Rule put him on. I can say that Jay Z let you know that record. Can I get it? Was Josh's first big record, right? And so it, was up, it was up to him to come up with. Can I get it? I mean, it was his record, but he gave it to Jay. But then he, it was up to him to come up with the Holla Holla single that right. made his career and propelled his career. So now it was all of their turn. I missed that opportunity. That's all I'm saying. It's like I call it spade spade. That window right. was. Up. It's up to you to walk through it. So do you do you feel that possibly during that time with, with Irv having so much stress and pressure on him that the records with Charlie just wasn't connecting? The records with Charlie, do you feel like I he just said it in our last talk? You know what I'm saying? I love Charlie. Charlie's, you know, that's Chuck. Shout out Chuck. But she didn't like her singles that Irv was like, we going with this. After she's on the down ass bitch record and everything is fucking flowing and moving. The singles she had, she wasn't secure. See, and I said it. Every, all those artists from Jay Z to DMX to Ja Rule, to Shanti, even, even Lloyd, they didn't argue when Irv was like, "Let's go." Lloyd changed after all of those other things, but in the beginning, it was like, "Let's go." I'm fucking the idea, and that's Irv's probably secret if uh, chemistry when he's dealing with artists. Mm -hmm. That chemistry, when they fuck with him and give him that blind faith and fuck with him like that. Now, mind you, he's listening to them as well. But just imagine being dissed by a label as big, big as Interscope and the momentum that 50 had behind going to trial, Oof. not for what your future looks like. Like, I can, I can totally see. And at that time, like early 2002 through like 2004, I think the industry 
the energy in the industry was changing itself. That's Earth's man. That's part of his fucking when he he gets so excited when he hears something hot. When he hears something, when he he feels that talent or something hot. That's why I said no one has to tell him to do it. It's just gonna happen if he hears your shit and he hears something different and special. That nigga loses his mind and it consumes him. All he thinks about is what to do. You know what I'm saying with you. Even and even Lloyd said once he played the records and they was there, he said y'all ain't let him out the office, man. He said y'all got still done that day. That's it. Got it done just like that. You hear this question all the time. If 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 an artist is in a signing situation, because I've heard that before, people feel like they got the best music, the best shit. But I don't think, like you say, nobody's going to let you out of their sight when they just know that you got something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that a lot of people feel like they, they have the record and they don't, man. And if they're not figuring it out with you, then maybe you need to keep working. You know what I'm saying? There's not, And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the, the universe, timing for the universe is the most important thing. So, mm -hmm. like, they the earth got a bunch of losses on his under his belt with, with, with records that didn't work. I mean, you only get the, the success because you tried so many times, right. you know, and that's what he has. He just didn't stop. The nigga's relentless. You know, he gives an analogy of himself. If you ever seen um, I Am Legend, mm -hmm. if you ever seen I Am Legend, the very end of that movie, this is Irv's analogy of his self. That zombie that was trying to kill Will Smith, he just started banging his head on that glass like he's coming. Right. He said, "That's me." He's the. He's the. He knows. And Will Smith is like, "Yo, I got. The, I'm gonna save you. Don't worry about it." Man. For the, sure. The zombie had it in his head. I'm killing your ass, nigga. You took my my <laughs> killing you. Yeah, and, man. And that's Irv's. And I'm telling you, Irv is relentless. When people ask me about me versus Irv, he has that relentless attack different than I mine. Like I have the same kind of will and patent, like drive, he does it differently. And uh, Don De Niro, my, my partner on mm -hmm. the business, my podcast, Giving Him the Business, always said Irv is a master manifester. And that's part of why that relentless attack. He ain't taking no, it's gonna happen. And you know, if you man, I can't wait for you to see the last episode. The last episode is fire. Yeah. Oh man, I just watched it. I'm telling you, I, I'm I can't wait for our next interview. <laughs> yeah. no, I know you on the we on episode four, but I can't wait. I'm telling you, the last episode is fire. You're gonna have some incredible questions for me. Do this, man. Do this for the fans and the people watching. I see the comments flowing. I see people going in. I see them waving. We appreciate y'all. Give us a little sneak peek of what happens in it. Give them a little taste, man. It's, what? it's the chat again. Yet another challenge after we win. After That's I win. something to understand. After we win, everything's just back to oh, we bought, we back. Right. You know, <laughs> and the big reason for that, like he fucked us. He blocked Earth. Mm -hmm. Earth saved that man's life in music. Say what anyone want to say what they want. Irv saved Leo Cohen's fucking life in music. Right. Leo coming to Hollis Queens crying, real tears. I seen it. Talking about they're taking Def Jam from him. He's losing his company. And Irv's relentless attack was he had DMX, Jay-Z, and Ja was in the groups at that time. See, people always think that's how it went. Nah. Right. It was relentless attack and ignorance. Irv always says to anyone, he tells them to stay ignorant. But what he really means is not know what you're doing. What Irv means by stay ignorant is don't get put in a box. Right. Because if you don't, if you, if you, if you know everything about the music industry and you know everything about what's going on, you know what I'm saying? you're going to get put in a box. This is how they told me to do it. This is how I should do this. This is how I should do that. Right. So you don't change anything. You'll just be part of what's going on. Right. And part of it is harder in the sense that you have all these people that's already there doing what they do. 
But that ignorance, which is what Irv said, was, is the reason he was successful, because Leo was crying those tears because he's losing his job and he's stuck in that box. Mm -hmm. He's Leo is stuck in the box, and Irv, this young new NR with all his energy, he's like, no, nigga, we good. The fuck's uh -huh. wrong? I got DMX. Just imagine you walk into a, 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 a office uh, and you're talking to the CEO of a company and you tell them you got these three independent artists that never sold a fucking record. <laughs> Shut up, nigga, you're going to be fine. Right, 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 that, right. But the, the, only, the, the main credit I give Leo out of anything was he, he and again, he had no other choices. So mm -hmm. I give him credit, but not like he was some super fucking genius. He said, fuck it, and back, got behind Irv. But he had no other options. There was no other music that could move anything to save his job. Or well, save his well, what, I mean, do you think that Leo switched up because of the, the, the pressure from, from the, the, the government? Like, what you mean? Like, was I, it? Oh, it's Leo. You see, I'm a big believer. Everyone is groomed and built. How, however you make your money, right. then whenever anyone makes their money, that's what they're going to do for the rest of their fucking career. Life, when they're doing business. Right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, someone just said he was jealous of Irv. That's a big fact. So Irv told him what he's going to do, then did it. Then remember Leo in, in, in our second interview, three, right. three, that album, Leo said, scrap it. You know how many hits is on that album? <laughs> so now when Irv goes back to Leo and says, nigga, I'm not fucking listening to you. Your best thing to do is get behind me and shut the fuck up. Irv really said that to Leo. He told the nigga, get behind me and shut the fuck up. So if anyone knows about uh, the 48 Laws of Power, the number one rule is never outshine the master. And Irv was notorious for that shit. Irv outshined Leo. And then Leo, when he first met Irv, I go, it, it's deep. Because when he first, first met Irv, Irv, he did his interview and he said, so what's your, what's your five-year plan? Which is what executives, typical in the box again, right? right. In the, what they do to niggas. And Irv said, you don't want to know what my five-year plan is. And Leo said, yes, I do. And Irv said, in five years, I'm going to become you, then kill you. Okay? And when he told Leo that, Leo said, you're hired. But Leo probably never thought He's going to do that. He just loved that energy and passion. You understand what I'm saying? That's what that's what No ID said about Kanye. He said he, he took him to the office and he told him he was going to be the next Michael Jackson. And they was like, get this nigga out of here. Yeah. Do his shit stink. Like, yo. But you know how many people probably hate it after that when he becomes that? <laughs> but yeah. you see, see, Leo never thought Herb was going to actually become him and then kill him. Like, once he became him, which was what Irv became, after 336, Irv is dealing directly to all the radio stations and he's telling Def Jam what he wants, not what they want. Mm -hmm. So they, And they're doing it. So when that happens, that. he's re remembering that first day. Like, oh shit, the next step is he's going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told you, we walked in that office, me and Irv, one day, we walk in Leo's office in the height of the battle, beef and everything, we walk in this nigga's office and behind us, we're facing him, but behind us is a picture of Leo hugging fucking 50 Cent throwing up the middle finger, which everyone, if you look at any pictures Irv did back then, okay, he was throwing up the middle finger. So Leo's doing that to spite Irv. He's hugging 50 and he's got the middle finger up and Irv and me turn around and Irv turns to Leo after he sees this, what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh. Yeah. This shit is This shit was deep. I told the story. It was on the editing floor. They didn't use it. <laughs> but this, I told the story. Uh, and, and again, this was a big deal because Irv said we came back to the office, called everyone in the office and said we can't win here. Right. He told us we cannot win here because he knew this nigga's fucking with the enemy and he's with 50. How was the boss? That's Jimmy I mean, would never do that at that era. And we was tight with Jimmy. Irv went to Doug Morris. Hold on, backstory. Irv went to Doug Morris. Right. Who was the boss of everybody. He's the right. boss of Jimmy I mean. 
Leo Cohen, anyone. He ran Universal. Everything is under Universal. So he goes to Doug and says, I want to away from Leo. To which Leo said, stops him because he was going to do it. He, Irv wanted to be with Jimmy Iovine. Right. He wanted to move from Leo because when Leo started keep shitting and shit, he's like, I need to get away from him. Doug Morris says, you can't leave Leo. You got to go back. So we was pigeonholed held right there. We were stuck. Wow. This ain't in the documentary. This is why we're doing the backstories here. Yeah. But this is a thousand percent real. Doug Morris dead at that deal. He said no. So then when all of these shit started going on and then more tumultuous times, it's I don't want to give away the next episode. So I'm gonna stop with all of this right there. But just remember what I'm saying so you can ask me questions back. I mean Still though, like, okay, so Leo Cohen is your say. Um, history lesson for people that don't know Leo Cohen, go look him up. But he was running Def Jam. And um I think he did he partnered with Kevin Lowes on three hundred, right? Yeah. Well he did. Kevin Lowes partnered with him. Kevin partnered with him. What? But why but why would the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe that name is Irv's name. Three hundred. What you mean? Irv had, again, off, this is after we won. These are all more bad stories. And Leo is putting together this new entity uh -huh. with Kevin Morris, his partner and everything. And he's coming to Irv, so about he wants him in. He wanted Jay-Z in. All of these, these were back conversations about this 300 deal, which Irv wanted 300, that name, because of the movie. Do you know the movie 300? 300. That's the Spartan, right? Irv is a movie buff. Irv knows all this. So he was like, that's a dope name because of what 300 represented. It was 300 men that conquered so many fucking things. And then Leo goes and starts a label with the same fucking name. Yeah, he jacked him. And I, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> no. How did y'all, okay, so now Leo is at like YouTube. So, He's in the documentary, and I was just, I don't know. You know I see Leo, I'm like, why did you shit on Irv every part? I didn't hear one positive thing towards Irv from Leo. Like, you really hate this nigga? Still? You didn't say nothing positive about that man in, in the documentary. Now, we let you speak your truths, so that must be your truth. Well, I mean, I did hear him say Irv Gotti was, like, stupid for, like, the associations that he had. But, I mean, here here goes, right? <laughs> I can I, say, you know, here, hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold on. That's the Leo Cohen used to talk shit to me and Irv with Russell Simmons because they knew Preem before we did. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Did you hear what the fuck I said? They would talk shit. Like Leo, like, I big new Supreme. You know why? That's when Supreme was Supreme back then with Run DMC and all of that shit, right? Right, right, right. And maybe they was getting their cocaine from that nigga. Wow. Backstories, nigga. Fuck out of here. So when, when shit goes good, when everything was cool with Supreme, I knew Supreme before you. Once you said, you don't want to act like you knew that nigga. See, that's the difference. Why he, I mean, so what the fuck he flipped out for? That's the difference between niggas. And they going to back right off of that shit. He backed way away from that man. But used to talk mad shit. Like, yo, we I knew him before that. He used to come to the parties and do this and do that. Come on, man. Yo, your Leo, your Leo impression is on point man i get it um i mean i i, I don't know you guys are definitely like tyrants um you you overcame a, a wave that would have killed people and for me it's exciting to see irv sit there with a smile on his face you know what i'm saying to sit there in the chair and watch vita and people say like yo i just needed to step away ashanti needed to step away the Lloyd stepped away. The only person that didn't step away was Ja Rule and you. Yeah. The only people that, 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 that stayed there the whole time. You know, you know, one of the biggest questions, Bender, that's been posed to me since this documentary? What up? Why was I on trial? 
You which I knew from the door. Like, why am I sitting there when it's all herbs? Why why am I sitting up there facing 20 fucking years of my life and I got nothing to show for it or no credit from it? Like th this is what comes back to me all day. Right, for and sure. My answer is simple and clear. It's my brother. Right. Period. And when everyone say anything, I am my brother's keeper. I keep it a hundred. Right. So today, that's why I'm there, because I ran the company, and then I'm sitting next to him. But it wasn't like it was my money they was talking about. That was my money was being laundered. With, if it's Earth's money, why am I sitting there? Right. If you're just an employee of the company, why the fuck you on the case? But you understand what I'm saying? Like, no one says shit. I just, I just eat all this fucking shit and have to deal with all this shit. But I don't get that credit, and I'm like, God damn, my nigga! Like they ask me, and this is the fucking reality. Why am I sitting there? Now, listen, all herbs dealing is his man with fucking uh, praying. Why am I sitting there? True. You know what I'm saying? And no one says a fucking word. They just keep moving, and even Irv never says nothing because little brothers never see what a big brother do for them. They just take it for granted. Look, everybody that's watching this interview, man, is dope. We get we getting behind the scenes exclusive information straight from the source, the horse's mouth, Chris Gotti himself. Um, if you haven't been watching, in case you've been under a rock, we talking about the Murder Inc. story on BET. Murder Inc. documentary, baby. Talk about it. That shit is iconic, man. I'm telling you, when I seen it, I'm fully impressed. An incredible job done. Again, and then like I, like me and um, when we had Michael J. Payton on, the director, and we was talking, um, and I was like, "Yo, it's not enough minutes. It's only it's five parts. It's a five part series, hour long each, which is really forty minutes per episode. It's not enough fucking time." That's good and that's why you came to me with the, this doing this for the backstories. I like hearing people like you give insight, man, because not only as a fan of Murder, Inc., but there is so many questions that don't get answered. And then I think that, you know, I like that we're on Instagram Live. We've been having conversations about having it on, you know, your podcast platform. We're talking to some sponsors. Everything's looking good. But I didn't want the conversation to be controlled. I wanted us to say what the fuck we wanted to say. And that's what we're doing. We Exactly. What the fuck we want to say? How we want to say? That's how we did. That's how Irv did the doc. I'm telling you, he told everyone, "Tell your truth." Vita, all of them. He said, "Speak." That's why she even says it in the first episode. They told me I can speak my truth. Shout out Vita. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he told everyone: "Tell your truth. Tell you what you really see." He wants to be an really an open book for shit like that. He wants the world to see because then it's only more impressive of the accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? That's all it turns out to be. Nah. It just turns out to be more impressive for what we really went through, got through, and the successes we made with everything going on. And I'm, it's, it was an amazing time. Like, it was unbelievable, man. It was really crazy. With that being said, there's one other person I want to give a special shout out to from Chicago. It's a mixologist. She has her own bartending business, mobile bartending. <laughs> <laughs> and create cocktails, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be sending you something soon, Chris. But we talked about this, wrapped it up today. Man, mobile bartending is just dope. I support anybody doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? On a hustler side, like, I just think that Murder, Inc. Irv is a hustler. Chris was a hustler. It started with the, with the DJ equipment all the way to, you know, a multi-million dollar international company that helped birth such labels or 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 lend lend its its ear to labels like Rockefeller. Yeah. You know, Rough Rock and then Murder Inc. And Murder Inc. is a staple label, man. It's like you can't say that you don't hear Ja Rule, whether you listening to a top forty station or you know you're not hearing Murder Inc. records. So I mean that that was just that was just a blessing. So man, shout out her, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate her for supporting our platform. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. So tell me about what, man, there's so much I want to know, man. I don't know if these conversations, <laughs> you, know, you know, what are y'all going to do to tell the rest of this story? Like, I feel like, you know, we both talked about you guys doing better on social media, but mm -hmm. I mean, 
I, I haven't spoken to Irv about uh, elaborating on the story. You know, um, he's, he's, you know, I, what's crazy is I just got to watch his movie Made in America today, um, Fire. You seen Again, the, the whole movie or you just seen a cut of it? No, the whole movie. Irv is a monster. So the family, you and the family watched it tonight? Every, the whole family watched it in the, in the theater room, like, like had popcorn and fucking raisinets, the whole thing, nigga, for real, for real. Hey, my mom's was talking to the screen like we, she was really in the fucking hood watching the movie or something. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. <Yeah. laughs> hey, my mother was spelling. We was like, oh, she's spelling because she don't curse, but she'll she'll spell it out for your ass. <laughs> you <laughs> You spell out, you spell out the curses. <laughs> but made in America for tales, man, man, powerful, powerful. And again, uh, the culture has to take it in. This is for them. See, and, and when they realize that's what my brother's really passion is for, the culture. He wants to give the culture something to really enjoy and love. Made in America, man. That's the Jay-Z and Kanye West song. And the intro, I'm going to just let y'all know the intro is fucking crazy. So, man, dope movie, man. We're watching your evolution. And, and you know, I, you know, without knowing you guys, just got to watch Murder, Inc. from afar and just say, okay, I seen where this ended up. And, you know, like that, that album that y'all put out with Wonderful One and those records, like, Nigga, I love, like, when I heard that R. Kelly shit, I said, man, this shit is a problem. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, Murder, Inc. is known for hit records, but it's something about you guys with this visual era, man, in the digital era with film and, and media that I feel is going to be big, man, and it's just exciting. Like, you know, I'm not a big sports buff. Like, I, I like boxing. I like, you know what I'm saying? That type of shit. Okay. Music is my sport. So seeing you guys like do these different kind of deals and seeing Nori do drink champs, like it's yeah. like wow. There's there's other places for we, people to go. No, damn it. Uh, I'm hit you with the master P. Uh, nigga, there's no limit. Y'all turn in the fuck. You know up. what's crazy? I'm gonna give you another backstory with Jay Z, right? What up? Irv told Jay. I mean, this is before he had his clothing line. This is early days, Jay. Mm -hmm. And he tell Jay, man, there's nothing you can't sell. And Jay would look at Irv and he, I could see in his eye, he's just looking at Irv because Irv, you know, when you got, when you talking visionary, right? Shit, everyone don't see that vision as clearly as you might see. Not saying Jay didn't see it, but right. he may not have understood how to get to it at that moment. Right, right, right. Right? And Irv kept telling me, we can sell your candy, but why Babe Ruth can sell candy bars? Nigga, you bigger than Babe Ruth. This is what he would tell him. You could have your own potato chip. This is before all of them, them potato chips you see right now. Right, this right. This is early days, early, early. So when we see it, it's like, yeah, it's supposed to be that. But Jay does his deal with his clothing line, mm -hmm. rock wear. And he's sitting there and he tells Irv, you right. We could sell anything. That's when Jay, to me, officially, officially knew there's no limit. Right. This, we on our masterpiece shit. Uh, there's nothing that's we can't do. And that's, that's what hip-hop did for us. See, hip-hop did that for us. So Irv, again, when I said he's loyal and I was talking that Leo, Irv Loves Leo. Even after all the shit in Leo did, he still loves Leo. He helped Leo helped change his life and he helped fuck it up to a degree. Of course. But Irv, that's also look, remember, God gives you these challenges too to make you better. So so I could easily say the shit Leo did was basically done by God to make Irv even iller than he was. So when Does that make sense to you? Am I bugging? No, 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 I get it. So when y'all recording the doc or whatever, the story, are y'all there when Leo is there or y'all there? No, uh, we're separate. Everyone was separate. Okay. <laughs> I, I, Irving and Ja was the only ones there together 
when they recorded. Now we all had one day we was every at, mostly everybody was in this studio to record by themselves in each room and doing what they do. You know what I mean? So what about when Jay Z came? Was Jay Z there by himself? No, Jay was at, we had to go to Jay. Jay, come on, that's Jay, man. That's whole. <laughs> we had to go to L.A. Yeah, we his crib. So 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 crazy. But it was hard getting them. And again, I'm so happy he did it. And the information he divulged, because you never heard this from Jay. All right. these years, he's finally saying it for real. Because you, again, the truth is the truth. He's not going to sit there and not do it. If he doesn't, he's got to tell the truth. Or else it'll be crazy, because it's like, man, we know too much. We could prove you lying, and then you're going to look crazy. Yeah, not in this area. You got to tell the truth. Not out to Jay, man. And Nas, even Nas, Nas gave it up crazy, yo. Crazy. That's the man. Fuck, I fuck with Nas. I always did. Fuck with Jungle. You know what I'm saying? Gave it up crazy. Wait till you see the last episode. That's what I'm telling you. Shout out they, to Nas on tour. Hey, hey, shout out all of them for doing that, man. That's a blessing, and that's that's dope that they was able to do that for her. So y'all got to be the first people in, in history to get Jay-Z and Nas to show up and do interviews. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe us in like the Grammys or something. <laughs> That's great. I mean, yo, if y'all watching it, man, y'all watching the live, y'all enjoying the live, put the hearts in. You can buy, follow Chris Gotti. If you're an artist looking for distribution, right, yeah. Adventures Music, it's unlimited releases. All of those other companies don't give you that. I want to come to me directly and get you a digital distribution deal. I'll help you get your music on Adventures Music. That way you can get shit to all of these. Defender for that. Yeah, nah, man. So, I mean, thank, thanks, Chris, for the fucking technology, man. You got people. This is like a dream come true, man. You got people like Jay-Z. You got people like Nas. You know, yeah, I, I want to just touch on because you said you said something with uh, Adventure Music. For sure. And what I'll do for them, my man Rich Black, my partner, we we own a bunch of internet stations. I If you bring your vendor, what we'll do for you. What up? And the artists you bring, we'll get them on Highly Unique Radio, which is our staple out of Atlanta. We got over a million plus listeners every fucking day. So, I mean, one of the biggest internet stations you got in the country Highly Unique Radio is fire, and we will actually put get their records played on Highly Unique Radio for them. If it comes through you. First. If, I, if you bring it to me, Bender, that's what I'm going to do. Let's do it. I'm listening. I'm listening. But that's what we'll do. We'll get them on Highly Unique Radio, get their records spun. I'll send it right over to Rich Black. He'll, he'll put it in rotation, and they'll be in, in rotation. And it's a... Uh, I believe it's a BDS station. I mean, it, it gets accounted. Like media base and all that media, shit. Yeah, all of that. B BDS. Got you. So listen, man, artists looking for opportunities, man. That's one of the that's one of the, the, the biggest things that I've noticed about Chris from knowing him many years. Like I've seen him in the studio with multiple Chicago artists and he he said, Yo, Ben, the competition breeds success. So you got artists and producers in the room fight. I won't say who the, you know, producer is, but they ain't even want me there. I played Chris some music. And he's like, yo, niggas ain't even want me, they ain't want me at the session. I'm like, yo, it ain't got to be. Like um, that. You know, it's funny because um, everyone's not built the same, Bender. Meaning you could have the dopest shit, right? Right. Not personally, but someone could have the dopest music. Mm -hmm. Ain't got that confidence. They backing down to a nigga that got more swag and confidence than them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and then you get, and you have to identify that, like as an executive. I gotta figure out. Now nah, this nigga got that shit. He just is a little more timid than these niggas, but right. he got. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got that coat, and that's something that you have to figure out. And that goes for artists when they're picking their music. Just the loudest nigga in the room may be the weakest nigga in the room. You never know. Right. I mean, even my nigga, I think it was yeah, somebody came to me like, yo, Brenda, you know what's funny? It, 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 people can tell, man, I have something really special. You're like, yo, this ain't for you. But it's like, I got all the relationships, so nobody can stop me from fucking doing anything. It's just like sometimes when you're around 
niggas with the weird energy, they want to stop me from hurting somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. just turned into some extra shit. And I'm like, I don't want to be around it, man. I'm just at a place in my life where I chase positivity. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I think the same thing from you. Like, we, we've had conference calls. I just want to see people win, bro. Like, I don't got time for the bullshit. You know? I want to see niggas winning too, man. Hey, you know how I look at it? <laughs> I'm going to give you my my theory. Chris is about the underdog, man. It's on, It's not only that. You know, there's, there's a lot of real niggas out here that, that's trying to get up. And if the more get up, the less chances I have to deal with them on some other shit with maybe my niece, my nephew, my daughter, my son, you or my you know what I'm saying? On some bullshit. Because I don't feel I have anything. So I'm not never worried about me. I'm really worried about more of my family members. And the the more people up, the less they're gonna wanna be involved in bullshit. Yeah. True. True. You know, unless 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 and you being up is because of the violence that you do, which is there are people out there. That's what they do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Man, I seen the thing. It was like 50, this weekend, 51 people shot in Chicago and, and so many killed. And I'm just like, even though I'm not at home right now, I'm not in Chicago, um, or shall I say I don't live in Chicago anymore. Man, that just that breaks my heart to hear it because New York is the same way. Like it's, it's real in New York. You know what I'm saying? But no, the negative violence is is, is increasing. But and again, I'm I'm in a different place mentally. Like, and I look at violence increasing because of not just people being violent. It's just less opportunities. They don't know generating revenue. People these these times are different now. A lot of the youth they don't even want to have a job. They don't think that they should be working, but when you don't have money, you kind of get violent. I was violent when I didn't have money. You know, I told I told you, I told that to Jesse Jackson uh, when I was in Chicago one time. And I said, you know, when I didn't have money, I was out doing shit to get money that was violent. When I got money, I started telling niggas, yo, don't do that. Yo, chill out. Yo, y'all shouldn't do this. Y'all shouldn't. That's what I did after I had money. <laughs> right. Well, what, so I, I'm hungry. It, wow. It's Opportunities. If these kids don't see these opportunities out here, they gonna get violent. Yeah, everyone want to eat. But I, I just think that anybody watching this, like this conversation, is not only on live, but it's gonna go to my YouTube. Uh, sure. I man, I want to help these kids, but like send messages. I just say presentation is fucked up, right? Because like, yo, I know on record that you sold over thirty million albums, right? I know that you've built multiple companies and you were successful with a construction company way, way before, you know, the record label. So, sure. I mean, I just think we need to have people inspired to present themselves in a way to get it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? I think they have problems with presentation. Like, it don't be that I don't like shit. It just comes to me all fucked up. You get the same thing? When people bring you shit, it just be all fucked up when they bring it to you? Right. Well, you know, it's not that they bring it fucked up. Everything's fucked up when you first start. I don't know nothing that was just right when you first started. It was fucked up. You got to fix it. You right. constantly tweaking that shit. It's like working at Ruby's Cube until you get all the colors right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you... Everyone don't have the patience. You know, everyone's not an entrepreneur. It's just what the life is. Everyone, some people just want to get a job, go to work, make their money, and then go home to be with their family. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I you know what I'm saying? wrong with that though i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you what's wrong my personal opinion only my opinion i feel like a lot of women suggest that the man should go home and be there and be there on the weekend and da 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 and i feel like in the fucking 80s it was that way but there's nobody i know that really does well that just goes and works eight hours and bring their ass home unless they have a hefty salary like you're gonna have a bit you, you, you have had nobody when you said it right the first time because a hefty salary, there's a lot more demand on your time and energy. Yeah. So How can you can not work more than your eight hours. The yeah. only people that work here, listen to me, I did construction. Right. That that job with no education to me, and I learned it. It wasn't like I, I just had it or got trained. I learned on the job and learned all the trades. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the few jobs that I know that I seen people work. And they ended up being millionaires after they finished working. No bullshit. Right. From 
from a worker standpoint, not an owner. Are you like a contractor? Like you just, you still do like fix and flips? You got I, I, one of the, my regrets is I stopped doing that. I lost my crew, all my workers and everything. I was the owner, but I worked as well. So I did both. But that was before Marine. Yeah, that's early days. I got a picture that uh, my oh, man. So Jack, a friend of the family, came over for my mother's birthday, and um, he sent me a picture with, with me and Irv and him on the roof right. of, a, of a, I believe we was on the roof of a garage, our garage, actually, that we redid the roof and rebuilt and shit. And um, that's before all of this shit music popped up. Nah, man. I mean, like I said, y'all just got an interesting story. And, and and what I'm hearing from the director's mouth, the Rizzo family is close-knit. And I mean, you know, shout out to my brother. Like, man, I, I went through, you know, problems with the, with the justice system, you know, with my brother. And it's tough, man. When you have a loved one locked away, it's like a piece of your family is fucking locked away. You know? Yeah. And, and man, that shit don't feel good, you know? And the way... Yeah. Wait, my, I, sister, my sister Angie um, said to me one time, we was talking after we won the trial, and she's like, basically telling, let me know how this family, we don't know what we would have did if you, me, and you, Irv, would have got locked up from a family standpoint. Like, I don't know my kids. I, I like I hate, to, I don't even like thinking about it. When she brought it up, it made me kind of go there and right. mentally. And I was like, I didn't want to keep thinking about it. So, you know, anyone that got people inside, I know it's about getting them from inside, outside. That's it. Get them home. Right, for sure. About that. That's One of the things we lost with slavery is family. So that's why when people hear about my family, they, it's rare because black families was broken up and right. destroyed. And slavery was the first thing that did it. Incarceration was the next thing that did it. And it would just tear families apart. And, you know, I was watching something and it was touching on a lot of real points, like family's the core of self-love. It would change so much political things that's going on, like for, from a, a mental standpoint, you know, we have all these mental things, but that's the family that's missing. That's why we have that. Listening to you talking, that's right. Two means a lot of motherfuckers to have your record of a lot of people, man. Yes. Two million. So man, if y'all if, if y'all want access, man, listen to me. I don't want y'all to get it fucked up. I started as an intern. I had people help me write raps. I became an artist. I interned John Monopoly Hustle. Um, man, this is big, man. John John, yeah. You know, I worked with Kanye West early on. So for 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 you for you young for for you young cats in the game, and I. Old man, right? For the young, even though I feel like a young cat, but you know, man, the opportunity to have somebody that really knows the business help you with your digital platform and help you, you know, just to release music, man, that's a fucking advantage. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it don't get no better than that. He has a really affordable service. Like, what you niggas is spending on Balenciaga shirts, you could come over here and, and, and listen, buy the membership. If they real Balenciaga shit. <laughs> Yo, I encourage y'all, man, to get Ad Bitches music. You can get it through me. We're going to figure it out. I told Chris I might want to do like a QR code. I'm only going to do some type of fancy shit. We'll figure it out. But if y'all want to just DM me now for y'all to get a digital distribution deal. And I want y'all music spinning on that station out of Atlanta with them 2 million listeners. And I mean... Of course, you'll still have Spotify and all the other shit going on. Hey, and they can get the app. They can get the highly unique radio app, download it, and then they'll hear their shit spinning so they know it ain't no bullshit. Facts. Yeah. You know you know what I did, man, one time? I was at the radio station. I won't say what radio station. And I seen the motherfucker coming out the station from Capitol Records, right? Without saying no names. And I'm like, you know, what do you do? He gave me his card, and I was excited. I was hyped as fuck. It's like Capitol Records, right? And I had a single, and I'm like, you know, I'm up here, you know, music, music day at the station, and I'm like, fuck that. Like, yo, what would it take for you to work my... He's like, yeah, I work records for the station. I mean, for the label, but, 
You know, I'm an independent record promoter too. I'm like, I'm gonna hire this nigga from the record label and let him yeah. take the fucking station. And my shit was spinning everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I got with him. We had a few business meetings. We handled business. And I mean, that's it. that was just it, man. You got to spend money. A lot of people don't want to spend money. Like, you know, you, you hear people talk about thousands of dollars, or even 100000 How much money do you think it took to make Murder, Inc. Murder, Inc.? <laughs> <laughs> well, you talking about, see, there's so many things that you spend money on. So are you talking about making a record? Are you talking about just promoting the record? Which one are you talking about? Top to bottom, man. Get, get, because people. This is shit that people go. Make, to, yeah, get, get started. Get started. Millions of dollars to get started. Yeah. So okay, millions of dollars. Now it is a different time. So if you was an artist right now and you was from North Carolina or you was from Chicago, what would you do to get your music heard? Give me the top three things that you would do right now. Do. It's pray. <laughs> Cause it's I get on my knees and pray because it's that hard. Okay, the first thing you do is pray. What's this what's the second thing you're gonna do? You're talking about today now, right? Today. Today I wouldn't put out a record. I'm gonna give niggas the jewels to how they pop off. Okay. Uh every record label follows this blueprint. So I'm gonna say if they do it, you should do it, right? All right. First thing, and, and they when I say they follow it, they don't do it technically. They let the independent artists do it, but this is how they sign that artist, right? From this world, um, and I would put, I would make, um, I wouldn't put, release any records today. I would actually get as much money as I can mm -hmm. to get, and create. Uh, it's crazy to make sound, then to just bear with me. I'm listening. TikTok, TikTok campaign. For those songs, unreleased records. You hear me? See, artists. This is a very difficult task for artists right. because that's their baby, mm -hmm. and they don't think putting something out for free is is the right move. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, do do that. Um, you put this out on TikTok, put a campaign to market and promote it, whatever your resources are. Right. And if the record has that appeal to it, people just on TikTok redo it. They put it up. They re they they they, re cre they create their little whatever to your song. Right. And that is your best chances to date. So you ask for three things, and I'm only giving you that. <laughs> I made the plan and that. Okay. Right? I'm not telling you not to do TikTok, I mean Instagram, but the reality is Instagram is now no longer the young. We're mm -hmm. older on Instagram. The young is more on TikTok. You know, it's, it, it is music shit is a young man's sport. Mm -hmm. So they have to understand that if they're not doing this shit. Now, Instagram is very powerful. Don't get me wrong. It just isn't creating the spread of your music like TikTok. For sure. Now, listen, y'all watching the live, y'all make sure y'all follow both of us. So, and follow, not only follow, but turn the notifications on. Man, it's so much power, power with social media. Like, I even stopped, I really want to say technically stopped being an artist to get in this role. Because I knew that my voice would amplify other people's voices. And I think that that's one of the things that we both see eye to eye on. It's like, you know, even last week when we talked, you was just like, man, I wish I would have had more artists on Murder, Inc. But now having adventures, you know what I'm saying? You could give hundreds of artists an opportunity. Thousands. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. Riley, that's real. Free game. I just gave it out. I promise you. Now, I let's me how I got yeah, my money. Everyone wants a record deal, which I, I want to get rid of record labels. Right? If you do what I'm saying, we will be able to, I will be able to look at TikTok, look at the, 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 the algorithms and how much all the analytics that come from that, what I just said, and I will know whether this record should be a single or it's about timing. So you might have a hot record today, but the world ain't ready for it. The no. world ain't in tune. True, true, true.
So you, as a, when you, when you're an independent artist, you have to play artist and executive, and an executive doesn't have an attachment to a record where an artist does. Right. right. That's the difference. So an executive can make those harsh decisions, and the artist gets pissed off. But those harsh decisions is business decisions that need to be made, especially in the beginning stages of a career. Absolutely. Now you have a lot of information backing why you're making that decision in analytics. So use those analytics. Look them up. Look, research what your record is doing. Be truthful to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. God damn, that's the worst shit you could do. <laughs> Niggas be lying to themselves, acting like their record is really popping and got nothing to back it up except for their mouth saying it's popping. Right. You know. Well, you on live, man, and I, I, I like, I like fucking with the live, man. So if there's any artists on here right now, um, and, and y'all serious about, uh, you know, getting a digital distribution deal? I think it's like one fifty. They can just go sign up. Is it unlimited lifetime member and unlimited releases? So y'all go sign up at Adventures Music and let me know you signed up, and I'm gonna go talk to Chris about you. So whoever's watching right now. I'm watching this shit, and he's watching it. If you screenshot in a receipt to say you signed up, I'll yeah, you do that, and I'm gonna give Ben to that credit for that, and get you out of your radio play. So that's another man. It, that's that's how shit happen. Like, listen, another thing too, right? People bring value to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew that they had these amazing platforms. I when I call month and a half ago, I didn't talk to Chris about me. I talked to Chris about what he had going on. I'm like, Chris, how can I help you with your shit? And that's that's a that's a skill, bro. Like, a lot of artists don't have the skill of saying, let me put myself second. Let me help you with what you have going on. And Kathy just said something. She's one of my artists. I've seen on my live, um, my, my thing. She was like, it's an artist community. And that's a fact. So all these artists that are with me, like, she's one. They support all the artists that come through. So just imagine you got a platform that you're gonna inherit other people to follow you, share, like your your, your stuff, because they want you to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got a ton of artists that's checking in with me while we've been on. It's just she just wrote that that artist community. She's and she's from Australia. If I'm not and she's from out of the country. She's not in this country. She's from another country. So again, we are a global company. We're not just America. And we're worldwide sharing. Look, she just tells it. We're worldwide sharing. That's a fact. So at the end of the day, that's a powerful tool for any independent artist to inherit just because they came to my platform. You know, there's, there's subtle differences from all these other platforms. You know, we all do distribution incredibly well. That's easy. That's the easy part. What else do they do? I challenge them to tell me what else they do for you aside from distribution when we all do that. You know what I'm saying? What's good, brother? You know what I'm saying? Nigeria's and you know artists from out there. We have all of that shit on adventure music, and we support them, and we try and give them the education. Jay Small said people yeah. never bring shit to the table. Go ahead. <laughs> he said people never bring shit to the table. That's true too, bro. Well, you know, you know, I don't want to say that. You know, I, I like to stay positive, man. Whatever their contribution is, their contribution. Man. But you got to realize everyone's not like you or like myself. But you know, you no. Know, listen, Chris. Though I, I had shout out to Burundi and Malik Youssef, who they helped me. He helped me get my deal at Koch when I when I was first starting. But I sat around and I was the fly on the wall, and I would watch how deals was being handled. Um, you got to learn. People like have this thing against being having a mentor or paying a consultant. Like, I'm not going to pay you to talk to me. But you got to understand, I'm talking to everybody that runs every fucking company that you're trying to get on. It's yeah. different. It's different. It's totally different. That's how I feel because I'm dealing with all these, like, I get so much different information um, that you're not going to get. And I try and pass it on. But now, we got one more of these conversations, man. So if you guys want to sponsor the conversation. You want us to mention your business, brand, product, or service. 
to be brought in. If you would bring them in, I don't have a problem with. I, I just what I want, honestly, Bender, is questions. The more questions, I do my seminars. I do seminars. We're setting up a five city, uh, 25 city tour just now. Another thing that Adventure does that no other platform does for you from a distribution standpoint. But when we go on this tour, I do a seminar. Mm -hmm. I do seminars and I tell everyone, no questions are bad questions. Ask questions. So they can ask music questions and we're doing a documentary. So we want documentary questions is also but it's all, I tie it all together because it's all the same for me. Y'all got some questions for Chris Gotti. We're going to take, we're going to take a minute or two and I'm going to read through the questions. So like y'all drop y'all questions, whether you're an artist, you're a producer, it's a Murder, Inc. question. It's a question about the Murder, Inc. story on BET that he could answer that I couldn't answer. Drop the questions. Have you can? Yeah, someone asked a question just now, right? Jay Smalls, he asked, he said, should artists still service a DJ you know, uh, service DJ in you guys' opinion. So in my opinion, um, DJs to me today, I don't know how much money you're spending. DJs are very important for hip hop, of course. But I haven't heard a DJ break a record in years, <laughs> honestly, right? So in years, I haven't seen someone break a record. So what I would tell you is I would, you're, they're going to play your record organically if you had, streams from again TikTok and things of that nature they see djs want to be the first one to break a record that's what their job is really to find the newest artists and play their shit but you know the game is so watered down today um i service records for artists because i have I, people want it so i have that as a service on adventure music and you we get you on all these stations and different that and again when you're talking about real terrestrial radio the cost is very expensive. And I would always recommend the artist to take that money instead of putting it in the radio, let's figure out a very strong digital plan with all these platforms instead of doing it through terrestrial radio regular way. Because I don't see it working for hip hop or R&B anymore. I still see it in pop music. I do not see it in black music. Right, for sure. So. For me, if anyone asks me that, when you ask Smalls, when you ask that question, I don't see a reason why. Put that, redirect that money to something else. Now, so, you know, with the DJs or whatever. Bless my grind said, have you came to Detroit yet? Yes, uh, we haven't gotten to Detroit. I'm trying to get out there. Shout out Southwest T, you know what I'm saying? That's family. I got to get out there and go fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? I got my boy Roy. Uh, Roy came home. You know what I'm saying? I got to go fuck with Roy, Dewey, all of them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out there. T-Dot, I got a bunch of family in Detroit. I just haven't been out there. It's just been scheduling issues. That's all. For sure. Let me see what other questions we got here. Um, hey, but if they, know so, if they know the right promoter in Detroit, DM me or DM Dex Diamond, and we'll put that in the route because that's part of it. We need to know what venue to go into and then the right promoter that could promote the event so we could pull in there and do what we do. Right. Because I definitely need that Chicago event. We're going to have to talk about that. Oh, um, yeah. We got Sir Juan. I'm a composer from every... He put Angel, but I know you meant Angle. I'm in a position now where I'm producing, co-writing, and writing. Artist development, engineering, video photography. So far as to do the album artwork. Bro, you didn't ask a fucking question. I don't know what this is. This he, is so he's a service provider. He didn't tell me he's an artist. He's saying he makes beats, he makes the artwork, the graphic design. He's a service provider, but I would have to see your work to see if I could use you. And then I have to know what's your price point. Because part of what I do for adventure music artists is I vet out all my service providers to make sure they could do the best job possible at the best pricing possible. Now, of course, pricing goes up, you know, but I'm trying to, you know, I have to service these artists from the lowest position as well. He said he's an artist as well. Well, pick something. I don't know. You gave a lot to That's talk. <laughs> pick what you want to do. Buddy. You know what I'm saying? You want to do all of it, you know what I'm saying? That's cool, but you know, what? like you said, you didn't ask the question. 
No, listen, and listen, I'm not, I, I hope anybody listening, like some people be like, Bender, you're an asshole. I'm not an asshole. It's just like, yo, if I read through a statement and I say, yo, ask your questions to Chris Gotti and you gave a statement, there's no question. <laughs> Hey, I don't Brian, talking about Detroit, and you got the right promoter, or if you're in another city, DM Dex Diamond, just like that, on Instagram. He's my right hand. He does all my touring. He schedules all the tours. And we're looking right now for promoters in cities that we could pull into on this run. The major keys to promote on TikTok was a hit. Yeah, now nah, that was definitely a gem to TikTok. Um, you got to learn how to drown out negativity. Okay, okay, okay. Questions, y'all. Questions, questions. Lenny B, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm digging. If you would have never done the show with him, it's not LOL. Fans got to learn to drown out. Okay, hold on. I'm looking for the questions. Uh-oh, a question button just popped up. What's the difference between United Masters and Adventures? That is, hold on, that's WS. MG underscore rider. That's a good fucking question, Chris. That's easy. That's a you're, good... you're looking at Stout. Steve Stout is the owner of United Masters. He's an incredible dude. He's probably one of the biggest guys in hip hop. If you don't know who he is, he's the reason marketing got into hip hop. He oh. took. He was the first person to start taking uh, big brands and put it with hip hop. You know, Jay-Z, when he did his sneaker deal and all of those, Steve Stout, you know what I'm saying? He, he's part of the reason Dame hates him because he was part of the reason probably they broke up with Stout, Dame and Stout, uh, and uh, Jay. But Steve Stout's an incredible, smart, smart individual. He, when he started uh, United Masters, he came to me. I already had Adventures Music up. And we talked, Irvin, Steve Stout, just so you know how long we've known each other, was in the same second grade to class together from Queens. And Ir, um, and Steve Stout's birthday and Irv's birthday is identical. June 26, 1970, both of them. So at the end of the day, we used to do parties together with Stout. This is before getting really big, big. You know what I mean? This is early days. So what same Party promoter? So the difference between United Masters and Adventure Music, Steve Stouts does uh, great things with like Y2K. He's he his real business is uh, a company called Translations Marketing Firm, right? So they do all the brand, all the commercials. Whenever you see hip hop in in in, in inside of these commercials, that um, the basketball with the NBA with uh, what's it, the State Farm or whatever, you know. Right. The kid, all those commercials, Steve Stout did it. And when you got that, that's a lot of power. And Steve has a lot of power. He raised $70 million to start United Masters. Um, that's a hell of a lot of money. The biggest company other than him that raised the most money was $7 million. He 10 times the ass. That's how big Steve is. And what they do... The only thing that they do differently than other distribution companies is he helps artists get into uh, video games because they control the music that's in these video games. But he really is only offering that to really one. So if, if he has, let's say, 100,000 artists, only one can get it. And I don't want to live in that world. I told him that was a bad model when we spoke about it. And he, he had wanted me to bring Adventures into United Masters and run United Masters. But we never could get the deal right, and then we never did it. Um, end of the day, that's just the facts. Well, Steve, listening, I have 100 million, 50 million or something for you right now. You never know. Steve, well, we always well, never know. But I, look, I don't, you know, I know. Well, I do know him. We, er, he just did the fantasy football. We was all together for that. Again, I Steve is a dear friend. This isn't like uh, a stranger. So he runs and owns United Masters. But the difference is uh, you won't find any company doing what I do from touring for independent artists across the country to education to teach you what the fuck you need to do. See, no one's telling the artists what they need to do. They're just saying, here's distribution for you. Oh, you get your, your, or they'll say, 
you know, it's all gimmicks. It's all business model orientated. So this is what they do. But the reality is at these levels, it's not, it's not nothing different except for distribution is the same. And then the business model of education, which none of them want to really truly empower and teach an independent artist the right moves to make and why and how much uh, to go into. Again, they're not going to tell you. You're never going to get any of them telling you about TikTok. They don't do it. But see, any you got to think about it, though. Most artists get do it and don't know what to do after that. Most artists and then, get wrong. Don't that know what to do after that. Is, so that's the biggest difference if you want to talk about differences. Uh, I wish, like I said, I'm never going to shit on any distribution company because they're trying to fight the fight I'm in. But maybe our agendas and goals are a little bit different, but we're in the same playing field, if you understand. And I mean, if y'all watching the live, y'all can also screenshot, you know what I'm saying? Put, you know, at me, put at Bender World, at Chris Gotti 187. Like, I'm sure to get reshared, like, Somebody's going to see it. You know what I'm saying? We're getting that digital presence up. Um, you know, feel free to add Adventures Music 1. That's the official Instagram for them. It's the one. Yeah, we was hacked. We was, you know, we was at like 50-something thousand. We got hacked. Steve Stout hacked your page. <laughs> Cut it out. I'm starting no shit. Why? <laughs> what up? Cake Boy Cheese was good. What's up, y'all? What 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 questions you got? We about to wrap out soon. Like I ain't gonna keep them that much longer. So if y'all got a music related question, you know, a lot of you artists ain't sold a hundred streams. No, he just said something else. The, 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 that, that's a a hundred percent fact. Um, you'll never see one of them CEOs pulling up in the hoods like I do in all these tours I go. I don't go to like the I go to the bottom because I know that's who needs the help. That's who needs to hear the shit I got to say. We're the ones making the music. We're the ones that's out here grinding like that. So I don't care. I go to those spots. I'm not looking for thousands of people in all these places. I'm looking to get next to the people that needs the most help and right. the most information, and that's what I give them. I got a question from Goddess369 out of Vegas. If you can influence and bridge the gap between the new generation of hip hop and the OGs, what would you do? Shit, this is it right now. <laughs> Man, what you got? Where Where do you put me? <laughs> that's why. That's the first question. Where do I fit in? <laughs> if you're counting me as a legend, thank you. And all I do is bridge the gap between the young and the old. This is a young man's sport, and only thing the young should be doing is learning the mistakes we made. Right and respect the you know that part, but they're gonna take it to new levels that we never took it to. That's called elevation. That's the growth and development. I'm on my GD shit. I know you ain't you from the shy, but you know what I'm saying. That's that development shit right there, and that's what it's really about. It's about growing and developing. We're not here trying to stay stagnant. And I'm not the hating ass old nigga thinking these young niggas don't sound good or they ain't got this. Nah, they got everything and more. And it's just about helping them understand that so they can take it to new levels. You know what? And I, and I think that that's what, man, like guys like you, Irv, Puff, Jay, I want to see y'all create more CEOs. And I feel that a lot of, I, I personally feel like, I don't feel like niggas is gatekeeping, but I do see like things where, you know, in my city, for example, I see people get opportunities to their homeboys, but it's like your homie might not be the most deserving to that position. Like, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this interview if I was doing shitty interviews. It's like, I got to be good at it. And I just feel like, you know, there's no, yeah, there's always information for artists. There's always information for producers. There's always information for engineers. But how do you become Irv? How do you become Chris? How do you become Hove? How do you become Puff? Like, you know, I think that Puff... Actually, we're, let's go to the documentary, put in that work. See, what you're saying is crazy. Like, you know, people see these guys, these people at the level they're at and want to be there. No, we got there 30 years now. You know what I'm saying? We was in music industry. This ain't overnight. This is grind time. So put in that work. 
And work doesn't mean you're just doing something. It means you have to be successful. Because that you won't go nowhere if you're not successful. So it's very hard. It's difficult. What happened is God, man, reaching down and touching niggas. Like, that's why you asked me first thing to do. I say pray. Right. Fuck that. Right. It's hard. And it's not like it's impossible because we didn't go to school for this shit. We just went with our gut. We didn't let no one tell us what we like. Like on a record, we pick what we want. We want to. I want to live and die with my choice. Not saying I don't listen to everybody, and and put that into the my equation. You know, I'm listening to everybody speaking, and then I know what I want to go with and don't want to go with. I'll take a little bit from here and there, but it's gonna be ultimately my decision because it's my life. For sure, for sure. Well, I mean. I, I I think we rap, man. I think we. Someone can... asked, I want to answer someone. Someone asked. I think it was um. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Go ahead, for sure. He, it it was um. He asked the question. Here it is. It was bless my grind, right? He said, "Why won't all the ma uh, all the major artists like you, Irv, Jay Z, Master P, all the other powerful artists start their own record label to help out, right? Artists from our culture." But that's okay. First, that we we all did it. Jay Z has Rock Nation. What do you mean we ain't doing it? I don't understand. Like, how would you say that? Like, that's all we did. But you know what? You don't get. You can't. How many artists you think we could sign and do? I think that Rock Nation, though, and I know people over there. So, like, please don't don't. You know, I just feel like it's a little. The other ones are unaccessible. I feel like you're more accessible in terms of like they can go get the thing, build you know, an artist hit me up and told me like, yo, I got an email from Chris. I'm like now it might have not have been from Chris it might have been fucking automation and Google track. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? To say no automation responses. Huh? I have zero automated responses. Oh. We people responding to everybody. That's the other difference to adventures in any of these other platforms. They're all tech and automated responses. So my response might come a little later because we dealing with a bigger volume and real people that's answering all those emails. I got a curveball for you. So do you have a, a, a cousin, little cousin that seems Ricky, what's her name, how you say it? Ricky. Ricky. Me. Ricky, man, like, I know she gonna see this. She's family, said the Birdie Inc. family. Did Herb produce a single for her? Not this one, no. Okay, so she got music out. What's the name of the record she got out? Dingy. Okay, okay. So y'all make sure y'all follow her. When she yeah. make sure she shared to her Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Let her know she working. But now I heard the record, man. What What are y'all doing with her? Like, what's in the plans? Are y'all just making her? Is she acting and, and doing music, or is she just doing music? I, just, I got we just, well, I just watched the movie of Made in America. We have three songs that Ricky did in that Made in America record. Um, man, she's a beast. <laughs> but yep. we got, got a lot coming. Her video for Stingy just get released next week on the 13th, I believe it is. Uh, so that'll be out everywhere. And man, she's moving. She's growing. She's moving. Numbers going up. She'll be on tour with me the whole thing. Well, man, we got we got to toast it up. I seen you had something over there. You out of it? I got a little something. All right, man. congratulations, my brother, on your your, your murder ink story on documentary out. Make sure you go get it. Hell, yo, man, I know it's more to come, man. Salute you, bro. Thank you, Bender. I appreciate you, man. Next week we're gonna tap in. We're gonna do the final. I'm about to go watch the final episode now. So yeah. At home, you need to go to BET right now, or BET Plus, whatever the fuck you have, and you need to watch this murdering story. All five, if you haven't seen it. But I'm you're gonna like this last episode. It really tied together, man. I know. I'm watching. I'm gonna take my notes. So incredible job! Shout out Michael J. Payton, the director. Again, incredible. You want, you want to do Tuesday next week? When you want to come back? Uh, you tell me. I'll figure out my schedule. Chris schedule all fucked up, but we appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll be on the West Coast next week too, so it's all good. Okay, we're gonna figure it out, man. 
Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting my platform. That shit mean a lot. Chris means a lot. You know, this is his history in the making. And um, yeah, we evolving, man. So thank you guys. Have a good night. Adventure music. Give it a bit. Don't forget Clash TV. We outside, yo. Always, all day. <laughs>